But your daddy's wala is too much. Ah, well, please, you just leave me alone. What's, he shouldn't disturb me again. Ah. So I, I felt so bad. I felt so pained. Because I knew how this man would prostrate for my father and beg me for money and help. Now 20 naira. But from childhood, I have learned not to say anything that will offend another person to him. Anything I hear from you that will offend pastor, I will never tell him. I may correct you, don't say that again, but I won't tell him. I won't strain your relationship. So I went to my father and said, Daddy, he said he was sorry that the last 20 naira he had, he gave it to someone yesterday. That. And my father said, I'm going to defend him. No. From that moment, I hated begging. Anytime my father now sent me, I will go, but I won't get there. And I will come back, present him a story. Because I began to hate begging. And it still affects me all my life, up until now. I don't know how to beg. May I not know how to beg? May you not know how to beg? Yeah. Someone did not get that. This amen very well. Yeah. I am more than this. If you are still living on begging, I'd like to let you know that you are more than this. So you need a change. You need to provoke it. What are the catalysts? In the life of this man who was always begging, the number one thing I noticed was dissatisfaction with the status quo. If you are going to experience any change, you must be dissatisfied with the status quo. The status quo is the way things are. The status quo, somebody said, is the mess we are in. The mess that you are in. The status quo is your present condition or situation. The status quo, they are the issues as they are at the moment. Issues as they are. That is the status quo. A major catalyst for change is dissatisfaction with the status quo. You must be dissatisfied with your present situation. You must be dissatisfied with what you are experiencing in your life at the moment. You must be dissatisfied with whatever experience you are going through. You must be dissatisfied. You must be tired of that situation. Somebody shout it. I'm tired. Dissatisfaction. In Genesis chapter 27 verse 40 Genesis, one of the most interesting verses of, of scriptures is this Genesis chapter 27 and of particular emphasis, verse number 40. Now, Isaac here was speaking what was supposed to be a blessing. You remember the background? Esau was called by Isaac. Go and bring me a venison so that I can bless you. And Isaac had gone. I mean, Esau had gone. But Rebecca, the mother, had and called Jacob, the one she preferred, and told him, go and get something, let's kill a, a, you know, a goat, and a ram, whatever, and present it to your father. You know the story. Jacob sold the blessings away. After Esau returned, after he had gone to chase game, to look for game, he returned, but it was too late. May you not come back too late. May another man not take your blessing. So the father told him, someone has taken your brother, has taken your best blessing, he has gone. And he said, I have blessed him and he is blessed. He, I have blessed him and he is blessed. Then I see uh, Jacob, Esau cried, bless me also. Well, bless me. He began to bless me also. And look at the blessing. The father said, and by thy sword shall thou live. Struggling. Somebody who say men will be loud. In life and destiny, you will not struggle. Yeah. You are not, they are not saying amen very well here. Yeah, we talk. Yeah. Thou shalt serve thy brother. Someone who say men will be loud. You will not serve your brother. Yeah. Then he said, And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion, thou shalt break his yoke from off your neck. When you are come to dominion, when you come to dominion, the message translation says, but when you can't take it anymore, when you can't take it anymore, when you are dissatisfied, when you become restless, when you can't take it anymore, you shake his yoke, you break his yoke from off your neck. 
when you grow tired. So, which means as long as you can take it, then you can continue to cope with it. But when you can't take it anymore, you break that yoke from off your neck when you are dissatisfied. Is there anybody here that is dissatisfied with failure? Dissatisfied with shame? Dissatisfied with barrenness? Are you dissatisfied with stagnation? With standing still? Are you dissatisfied with rejection? Are you dissatisfied with sicknesses and diseases? Are you dissatisfied with begging? I can't hear anybody. Are you dissatisfied? Then it's your responsibility to rise up against what you don't want in your life. Number two, desire. You must have a desire. Blind Bartimaeus was dissatisfied with the situation. He had a desire. So he ran, he called, he said, when Jesus asked him, what do you want? He had a desire. He said, that I might receive my sight. You must have a desire. A desire. Psalm 78 verse 29. Your desire. God, we bless and honor your desire. Psalm 78 verse 29. The Bible says, so they did eat and were and were well filled. For he gave them their own desire. He gave them their own desire. Psalm 145 verse 16. Psalm 145 verse 16. Thou openest thine hands and satisfied the desire of all living things. May God open his hands to you. May he satisfy your desires. I told someone, amen. Someone say, may we be loud. May God open his hands to you and satisfy your desire. In verse 19 of that same chapter, Psalm 145. The Bible says he will fulfill the desire of them that feel, fear him. He also will hear their cry and it will save them. He will fulfill your desire because you fear him. So you must be dissatisfied. You must have a desire. Number three, you must be desperate. Desperation. Desperation. Blind Bartimaeus was desperate. He was so desperate that when, that's desperation, when people say, said, keep quiet, the Bible says he cried out the loud, the loud, the more. He didn't keep quiet. He raised his voice. He shouted the more. That's a mark of desperation. A desperate man will not allow people to influence him or shut him down. A desperate man we not mind what others think about when it comes to praying. Crying out. A desperate man. He's desperate. Have you ever seen a drowning man? Have you seen a drowning man? You want to know the meaning of desperation? Drowning man. He's desperate. Anything he grabs. Is either that thing saves him or goes down with him? Desperation. You must be desperate. You must be there. De desperation will keep you in his presence. We make you cry out. Desperation will remove finesse from your prayer. Look at the, the choir song yesterday. Excuse me. Excuse me. If I get undignified. If I get undignified. Now, sometimes the need in my life wants me to cry out to God. And I, somebody is for me to shh. Beside me, I want to influence me with your tushness. No, I want to pray. In a quatu sade, in a tuatu sade, in the gear to sade. I want to cry out to God. I have issues. I have issues. I don't want them anymore. I want my story changed. And I know it's my responsibility to initiate the change. I am not going to keep quiet. I am not going to sleep in my situation. And I won't leave it in the hand of another man. I will cry out to God in the place of prayers. I will want to ask him to change that situation for me. Desperation. Cry out the more. So we see desperation when the time comes for people to pray. 
We see desperation. We see people who refuse to go. Now, if you read the story of, of, of the resurrection of Jesus, Mary had gone to the sepulchre very early in the morning. An angel had told her that Jesus had risen from the dead. She ran to Peter and said, they have carried the body of the Lord away. And then Peter, before even an angel had, they, so Peter and another disciple, John, ran. And that disciple outran Peter. Well, when she, he got there, he didn't enter the sepulchre. He stayed outside. When Peter came, he ran into the sepulchre. He didn't see Jesus. He saw napkin, 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 revelation. That was the revelation he got. Napkin, revelation, toe revelation. So he, he left. I wonder what he was going to tell the other brethren. Both of them left. They didn't see anything. But the Bible says Mary stayed still. She waited. She was desperate. She was weeping. And then she saw two angels. The longer you wait, your desperation will keep you waiting on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They are the ones who will see more than napkin. They are the ones who will see the Lord Jesus. So Jesus revealed himself. Angel said, oh, you know, yeah. She turned back and saw Jesus. And she said, are you the gardener? Where did you carry the body of my Lord? Jesus said, Mary. So her eyes were open. And she screamed, Rabboni. She wanted to hug Jesus. I said, Just don't, don't touch me. Stay longer. Desperation. Others have come to pray two minutes and they have gone. But you have issues. That must be resolved. You stay in the presence of God. Desperation. Number four, dropping. Number one, dissatisfaction with the status quo. Number two, desire for change. Number three, desperation. I'm desperate. Number four, dropping. Drop, drop, dropping, 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 dropping. Drop that load. Drop that. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Now, let me go, go back to Mark chapter 10. When Jesus now stood still and called the man, blind Bartimaeus, the man who was blind, the people who said, keep quiet before, they were the same set of people that said, be of good cheer, he calls you. And the Bible says, he took off, he began to run to Jesus. The Bible says in verse 50, and he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. Everyone who is desperate for a change, must cast away whatever is limiting them. You must drop everything in your life that can resist your change. You must drop anything and everything that, has, that is standing as a limitation on your life and your destiny. You must drop the sin that is dragging you back. You must drop the garment of sin you are wearing. We are playing with sin. There are certain sins that, that easily beset us. And so if you want a story to change, we, we are claiming, I am more than this and I want to see changes in my life. I must drop those sins that easily beset me. You know your weakness. You know the things you struggle with. You know those things in the corner that you are grappling with. You are even praying, oh God, have mercy. Some of us have even stopped praying. You have gotten used to it. It is going to limit your life and limit your destiny. So you need to drop it. Bartimaeus dropped everything that was limiting him. Now how can you run with parachute? With Agbada? Hello, you want to run? And you are wearing, you know the way it becomes a parachute and it slows you down. So you have to drop it. Every garment of field, every garment of sin, you drop it. Drop that bad habit. Drop that animosity. Drop that malice. I am more than this, but malice is slowing you down. I am more than this. Unforgiveness is keeping you down. You are holding someone in your heart. You have been holding him there for the past 13 years. And you are saying, I will never forgive you. And you are saying, it is when we get to heaven. You won't get there. That, that unforgiveness won't let you get there. There is the need for you to forgive whoever has something against you. I am more than this. You know what Joseph did to get to the place he got? Joseph, the man that was given a coat of many colors. His father gave him. But the brothers stripped him. What his father gave, the brothers stripped they stripped him of his coat of many colors. They took him. They dumped him in a pit. They brought him out. They sold him. They made his father weep. The father wept. While he was still alive, the father mourned his death. They were so heartless. What sort of brothers were these? They sold Joseph. But Joseph in the house of Potiphar again from, from, from fry pan to fire. 
Potiphar's wife lied against him and then they sent him to prison. Look at all those things. And in prison, finally, out of prison, he commits to rain. You are more than this. Oh. You are more than what you look. You are more than your experience. Joseph knew he was more than all this. I am more than this. But when he got to the throne, look at Joseph. He forgave everybody. He overlooked everything they did to him. This was very instructive in the name he gave to his children. When he had this firstborn, he called this name Manasseh. Meaning, God has made me to forget the toil, the suffering, the pains of my father's house. So the second born, he named him Ephraim. Meaning, God has made me fruitful in a strange land. So you cannot be fruitful until you are forgetful. You forgive those who have out against you, so your fruitfulness. You can't progress until you for forget, until you forgive. So I am sure saying to you, forgive those people if you want to move on, if you want your story to change. So these are the four things in the life of blind Bartimaeus. Number one, dissatisfaction with the status quo, with his blindness. Number two, a desire for change. Number three, he was desperate for that change. He wasn't just mounting it. And number four, he dropped every impediment. And these are the things that we must also do. If we want to really, really see transformation in our lives, I am more than this. You must be dissatisfied with your this. You must desire a change. A change for the better. You must be desperate about it. Give it what it takes. And you must drop whatever is limiting you. Let me, before I lead you to pray tonight, share with you four things that this catalyst will provoke. What do these catalysts, four catalysts I've mentioned, somebody say them with me, number one. I want everybody to talk, number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. All right. Thank you. Dissatisfaction, desire, desperation, and dropping. Just note those four Ds. D, 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 D. What will this catalyst provoke for the change to occur? This is the heart of my message. Number one, thinking. Somebody say thinking. Thinking. Luke chapter 15, verse 11, verse 20, verse 17. Or 11 to 20, but I'm looking at the time. But Luke, very quickly, let's go to the gospel of Luke, chapter number 15. The Bible says, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of good that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. He had spent all, there was famine, he was in want. Verse 15. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. To feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. And verse 17. Everybody, can we read verse 17 together? And when he came to himself, he said, How many I had servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger. That's my verse. When he came to himself. When he came to himself. When he came. What does that mean? When he started thinking. When he began. To, in verse 17. Let me read verse 17 in the contemporary English version. Verse 17. Pay attention. Verse 17 of Luke chapter 15. Contemporary English version says, Finally, 
He came to his senses. He came to his senses. Message translation says, that brought him to his senses. New International Reader's Version. NIRV. I like what it says here. It says, then he began to think clearly again. He began to think clearly. So, the prodigal son stopped thinking clearly. And that was what brought the problem upon him. So many of us, what we are grappling with, we brought upon ourselves. You are the cause of what you are going through, of what you are experiencing at this very moment. He brought it on himself. But our God is a faithful God. God did not say, Shabby, you brought it upon yourself. No, sir. When he began to think clearly, when he came to his senses, he began to think. If you don't think, you will stink. If you don't think, you won't change. Thinking is a necessity. Listen, when you are tired, you are dissatisfied with your situation. You desire a change. You are desperate for a change. You are dropping all mess. You will sit down and start thinking. How did I get here? How did I get here? And how do I come out of this place? The prodigal son started thinking. Your life won't change from what it is now until you start thinking. Again, I repeat. Your story will not change from what it is now until you start thinking. Thinking. It is a non-transferable responsibility. You have to think. You have been fighting your husband all the time. And you have keep saying, I am more than this, I am more than this. Until you start thinking, why am I even fighting? Until you start thinking, there won't be any change. So it has to begin with thinking. Start thinking. Start thinking. Think. Look at your neighbor for me, tell him I'll start thinking. You know, he's... he's, he's Tougher to think than to talk. It's easier to talk than to think. That's the truth. Because it is tough to sit down and not be distracted. And not answer your phone. He's beeping. What you, are so, you have solicited for and what you have not solicited for. Beeping, 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 beeping. And every now and then you have talked. Talk. You cannot sit down to think. And that's why we remain where we are. Until you start thinking, you won't change anything about your life. You won't change. I have told you, I just told you yesterday, how a, a boy in my class, out of 160 of us, was best student in 12 subjects out of 17. That got me thinking. Thinking. If you want your life to change, go home, think. Give yourself a thinking chair. Sit down and think for 15 minutes. Can you spend 15 minutes to think? Just think about you. How, can I do, how do I get better? How do I improve on my business? How do I improve on my life? How do I improve on my marriage? What can I do? How do I start, start addressing my husband? How do I stop addressing my wife like this? What do I do to make things better? Think. Think. It is what this catalyst will provoke. It will provoke thinking. And if you don't think, you may never change thinking. You have to sit down and think. Great works are product of deep thoughts. Shallow thinkers never make deep impressions. You can't make anything great if you don't think. You need to ask yourself, this, year, this one I've been fighting my wife all the time. What has he amounted to? Eh? We might have been fighting all this. What is the what is the problem? Thinking. I have told you here. There is nothing I have not told you here about myself. My wife finished me one year without thinking. She began to think. You know, we had just one car. And how do I describe this direction now? Pastor Buki, help me. My office was in Songo. My wife's office was at uh, uh, okay, okay, Bola. 
Okay, Bola, that's broken house. That was our office. Our house was in Akobo. Hold on, let me explain. Our house, this is Akobo. Akobo. My office is there. My wife's office is there. Is that okay? So, going to the office, we had just one car, one regular 1979 model. My wife would need to come from her office to join me, right? Does that not make sense? And go home. So she told me, please come and pick me from the office. I said, ah, I am here. Logic. I will now come here first to pick you. I will now drive back, pass this place again, and then say, it doesn't make sense. Ah, what is the problem? Come and join, I will wait for you. Ah! So, I didn't wait. I didn't, I waited for some time. She didn't come. I just drove home. So I got home. So I sat down to read. Man of God now, busy studying the word of God. Why will anybody distract me from the study of the word of God? So I opened the Bible. Was I reading? No. My mind was killing to She should be home now. She should be home now. She should be home now. Then the heavens opened. A major rain started. Kai. I had been home for 5.30 p.m. And now it was 7. And the rain refused to stop. And my wife was there. Ah. Then seven thirty. What will I do? Where will she? Where is she? Her call, no signal. Phone was not going. Her eight. She had not returned by eight thirty. So what? What in meditation was I doing? <laughs> so I was ready for a fight. I began to meditate and permutate and calculate what she would say and how to defend. You know, maybe because a lawyer in me, I started preparing the argument. The risk. <laughs> The reasonability, the unapplicability, the rejectability, the stupidability <laughs> of her request. And so my wife eventually, like 8.30, I went, opened the door for her, she entered. Of course, she was drenched. And then when a man knows his gift, he starts asking stupid questions. <laughs> If someone was so I was asking, and she was coming from the rain. I said, the rain, rain beat you. No, not rain. It's masquerade. <laughs> so she said, ah, that rain was heavy. I wasn't expecting that from my wife. Telling you the truth, because of who my wife he was. I expected the fight. So she pulled that uh, jacket, you know, and we could have filled a bucket of water from what, what she was wearing. So I stood there waiting for her to fight. To start the fight, she wasn't fighting. So she took her handbag and opened it and then brought a cloth, a scarf, she un unwrapped, brought another one unwrapped, brought a nylon bag, and said, while I was staying at the uh, Bodija for the trying to hide for the rain, I perceived the odor of fresh corn. And I know you love fresh corn, so I bought it for you. So she gave me fresh corn. Smell ibeoni. So I said, thank you. So she went, she baited, slept peacefully. But me, I couldn't sleep. I could not sleep. I began to wish and wish that she had fought with me. It would have been okay. It would have been better. At your man, no, tell you what your man saw. But this one that she did not fight, I couldn't sleep. So I was struggling. Then by 4 a.m., I woke up. I said, Why did you decide to injure me? I wanted you to fight. You should have fought with me. You didn't allow me to sleep. She said, eh. I could have wanted to fight. But I just thought to myself, All this fighting, what has he achieved? Why should I be fighting with you all of the time? She thought, thinking. And her thinking set me on fire. <laughs> and I changed from that time. And I have not forgotten what happened, what I did. And what I'm telling you happened in 20, 2002. But it's still fresh. She said, I just thought over it. Why should I be fighting? If you don't think, you won't change. If you don't think, you will stink. The prodigal son thought. And they returned home. Start thinking. Start thinking. Your result won't change. 
until you start thinking. You won't change your approach until you start thinking. And don't forget, what will push you to that level is when you become tired of your present situation. Somebody, are you following me? Yeah. Uh, you are too quiet for me tonight, but are we okay? Yeah. Because the way you are looking, what are we can come, can get with me, what are we, uh, sir? Oh, what are we? Think. Number two, these four catalysts, dissatisfaction, desire, desperation, dropping, will provoke a change of your association. Change of association. If you are tired of your present level, you know you are more than this, and you need a change. One major thing you can do for that change to happen is to change your association. If you take a piece of paper and write down the, a list, write a list of the six closest persons to you. If you write down the six closest person, your spouse, maybe your children, one, your spouse, one, your children, one, your friend, your best friend, your bestie, your bestie, write down six of them. Look at that list very clearly. You are looking at your future. You are headed in the direction of your friends, of the closest persons to you. Each point I tell you, tell, I will say with a story. There's one boy in the Bible, one boy named Hamnon. Hamnon, son of David. He had a bad intention. He was lost in after his half-sister, Tamar. But he couldn't do anything to her. He couldn't touch her. But unfortunately, he had a bad friend, Jonadab. May you not work with a Jonadab? <laughs> Jonadab taught him what to do. He began to teach him. This is what to do to sleep with your half-sister. Pretend to be sick. Tell the king to send your sister to come and feed you. And the king, sister, brother, go. Then when she come, bring, let her bring food into you in the bedroom. She means your sister. And the girl thought, my brother. She brought it and then, then you do what? You are the king's son. You are the prince. Why are you behaving like, a, like an idiot? And he raped her. And he brought his, about his own death two years after. In secondary school, please pay attention. And all students here. I had the bad habit, you know, because of my environment. One of the things that we affect who you are is your environment. Environment. And please, I plead with you. And I want to say you are more than your environment. They didn't answer me here. You are more than your environment. So don't let your environment become your reality. Don't let it condition your life. So my environment was bad. And it was affecting me. So in school, I didn't have money. So, there was a place I used to buy fufu and fish. All of us students who go there during assembly, instead of being on a school assembly, we buy fufu and bash on no market. So, I will buy fufu and then I will collect change. I won't give money. My wife me change. Give me my change. And the woman, how much did you give me? I will say, is this much? How much? She will give me change and I will leave. So, this very day, I bought fufu Mama, so I said, Mama, give me change. I carry my food. Give me change. And the woman said, You have not given me money. I said, I've given you. I gave you five naira. The woman said, Look at my collection. There is no five naira there. Then a bigger boy, I didn't tell him what we came to from school. Bigger, older than I was. He raised his baritone voice. Mama, boy, you're full in five naira. Five naira to full in if you change if you're full in ten naira. That boy gave you five naira. You used that five naira as change to the person who gave you ten naira. And the woman said, oh, Emma Binwa called me. I'm sorry, forgive me. So as we left the place, we called that guy Gengema. Gengema said, I've known you, Jackie, you're a girl. Oh, you're a shadow, dada. You should have shadowed very well. You should have opened your eyes and checked Mama's money before you may name. Oh, you get my, 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 I kept quiet. I had a voice. I wasn't born again. A voice told me, if you continue to follow this man, you are finished. 
I was still born again. He was helping me to cover my evil. And he was teaching me how to perfect my act of evil. <laughs> and you have a friend like that who encourages you to do evil, to do what is wrong. Who claps at what you do that is wrong. Who massages your ego. Who tells you what matters does not really matter. Until you drop that person, change that person, you won't be more than this. There are friends who help you to cover your tracks. There are friends, people who teach you how to do what is bad. You have to change your association if you want your life to change. Change your association. Change your friends. Any friend that is not adding to you, delete his name. Any friend that is encouraging you to do what is bad, delete her name. You have a friend, married woman, who is asking you to go out with another married man. To go out, delete his name, delete her name. Oh, don't say she's speaking in tongues. Delete her name. Break that association. Break that friendship. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. Bible says, he that walketh with the wise shall be wise, shall be a wise man. The companion of fools shall be destroyed. Can we read it in the message translation? Message translation, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. Message says, become wise by walking with the wise. Hang out with fools and watch your life fall to pieces. Don't hang out with fools. When you don't perceive the lips of knowledge from a man, don't go out with him. I have a friend, very wonderful friend, Reverend Femi Oduwale, Pastor Buki. Femi and I have been friends since 1987. So there was a friend of his that wanted to be my friend. So he introduced he said, this friend. And so we became I mean, mutual friends. So we were, it's a pastor. We're, relating. And so one day he told me that he bought keyboard from one man and then he said that we pay. So he didn't pay at the right time. He said he was telling the man I'm still going to pay. Please forgive me. Things are just not happening. So that the man came on a Sunday morning. <laughs> on a Sunday morning don't need praise worship. They were playing keyboard. That the man just came straight to the church, to the altar and they unplug keyboard and carry keyboard. <laughs> Say what an embarrassment. I said, ah, what an embarrassment. That's not fear. That's bad. I said, ah, that's what is, is, is I saw that members do when he went to beg him. He said, no. That they did not contributed money and gave him part. He now dropped keyboard. <laughs> Sunday service. Sir. So I felt, so I was like, oh, why would you do this to my friend? You know? So he came to me and said, see, we need to roof our job. Please, can you just give me money to buy? Borrow me. I said, okay, I can give you money. This is my contribution. I gave. He said, thank you for what you have given me. But I need you to also, I will pay this one back. So I said, okay. I gave, but don't forget. I now lent. I lent him money. He said, I'll give it to you in two weeks. Two weeks. Two months. Two years. He never said anything about it again. So I called him. I said, it's been two years. You know when he picked me, I said, it's been two years. He said, he said ah, Holy Spirit. He said, this morning, my wife and I were just talking, and I said, oh, I should call Pastor Yemi and talk to him. He said, Holy Spirit. I said, so what did the Holy Spirit say, tell you to do? He said, we get back to our way. I said, okay. I didn't need that money, but I just wanted to relate with a man of integrity. You have no integrity? 20,000 naira? You didn't pay back? Ah, I won't be your friend. So, I just pulled back. We are not enemies. When we see, oh, man of God, God bless you. How are you doing? But you are not, I can't be hobnobbing with you. A man of no integrity. Drop those friends, my friend. Some of you are here. I'm preaching. 
Number three, this catalyst, dissatisfaction with the status quo, desire for change, desperation, and dropping will provoke prayers. Thinking, change of association, prayers. First Chronicles chapter 4. I am going to verse 10, but I want you to please follow me. Let's read from verse 1. I want to show you the story of this man. We all know the story of Jabesh, but I doubt if you have ever paid attention to the story of his family, to his family narratives. I doubt if you have ever paid attention. Look at it from verse 1. Now, the sons of Judah, Phares, so it's from, from the family of Judah, Phares, Ezron, Kami, Or, and Shobal, and verse 2, Rahiah, the son of Shobal, begat Jahath, and Jahath begat Ahumai and Lahad. These are the families of Zorotite. And these were of the fathers of Etam, Jezreel and Ishma, and Nidbash, and the name of their sister, Azelelponi, and Penuel, the father of Gedo, and Hezar, the father of Husha. These are the sons of Or, the firstborn of Ephrata, the father of Bethlehem, and Asher, the father of Tekwa. Can, can, can you say, okay, father, fine. Asher, the father of Tekwa, had two wives. That's the only achievement. Halat, <laughs> Anara, Anara, Biahim, blah, 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 blah. Now, in the family line of Jabesh, no significant testimony. It was serial evil, serial stagnation. In the family, somebody begat. All they were doing was to be born and to begat. The only man was that had a difference, a little different, was he married two wives, if that is any achievement. Two wives, two problems. Or many problems. One husband, of course, plenty of problems. You're able to manage a man. You are wonderful. Let's not go there. Let's leave men alone for now. <laughs> so, what happened? Jabesh looked at his family tree. There's no significant testimony. Nobody is making it. There is the need for you to pay attention. In your father's house, how many university graduates? In your father's house, how many persons? Who are who and who have broken through? Who and who has made it? Who and who is making it? How many have married and married well? How many are staying in their husband's houses from your among your siblings, your sisters? How many? Jabesh paid attention to those things. And the Bible says, Jabesh called on the name. He prayed. And you know his prayers? God changed my story. God, I am more than this. I am more than the history of my family. I am more. And he began to pray. Once you are dissatisfied with a situation and you desire a change, you are desperate for it, you drop all the junks, you cry out. To God in prayers. Prayers changes situations. Finally, sacrifice. Sacrifice. Another thing that changes lives, that changes stories, that a man says, I am more than this, then what are you going to do? John chapter 12, verse 24. The Bible says, Except a corn of wheat, fall it to the ground and die. It abided alone. But if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. If that grain is saying, I am more than this, I am more than this, I am more than this, and it does not do anything about itself, it will die, it will remain like that. It will abide alone. And why it is abiding alone? Something will happen to it. So it has to fall to the ground and die. When he dies, he brings forth much fruit. When he dies, in Genesis chapter 26, verse 1, verse 12, verse 13, the Bible says, now there was a famine in the land, apart from the one that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimele, king of the Philistines, unto Gera. In that year of famine, in verse 12, the Bible says, and Isaac sowed in the land. 
Isaac so in the year of famine in adversity Isaac sold and in the year of adversity he sold and he prospered I am more than this you want to be better than this then you must drop your present level so your present level to receive a new level you must plant your present level whatever represents your present level the problem with us is we know we are more than this but what represents our present level we still hold on to it we cannot give it up and because things are scarce this very time, this period things are so tough this period, this period this period, things are tight and I, I must have told Pastor Buki the spirit of God steered my heart one day and he said, do you know that what 10,000 will do in somebody's life I said 10,000. What is 10,000? The Spirit of God said to me, there are people, even in the church, that 10,000 will matter to them. And then he said, give 10,000 to people. Okay? He said, give 10,000 to 50 people. So I didn't even calculate it. I didn't know. So, and one of the things I have discovered, once the Holy Spirit gives me an impression, a leading, I quickly say it out. King Kama Loshemi. Lest I change my, that's the truth. We're human. I can change my mind. Particularly if I start calculating and then I become logical. I change, you can change, you can change your mind. The Holy Ghost can say, give me something. As you are looking at me now. The Holy Ghost say, give me something. You can change your mind. I'm a fuman, yeah. The Holy Ghost can say, do something, then you change your mind. But immediately you carry, you say it out. You announce it. Uh -huh. So that's my own style. I don't know for Pastor Bukio, but my own. I must quickly say, so that I won't change my mind and negotiate and tell God, God, did you really ask me to do that? And you know, God won't even speak twice. I didn't calculate 10,000 naira in 50 places. Then I said in church, the Holy Ghost asked me to give 10,000 naira to 50 people. I don't know what, what, what would that achieve. And people scream, ah, yes. I said, it's too small. No! I said, okay. How much is 50,000, 10,000, 10,000 50 places? That's where the self most. I said, ah. ah, okay. So I had said, ah, before I said, okay. <laughs> and then, so, so I had said it. If I had calculated, he said, oh, that be that tent has just looked like 200,000 200, naira or something. But 500,000, half a million. So as soon as service ended, I was going to my office. One brother just walked up to me and he said, wow, excuse me, sir, what you said that. What, what a powerful thing that the Holy Ghost put it in my heart and said, the half a million dollars you want to give to people, I should give it to you. I said, oh God. Then, when the brother was going to transfer money to my account, he transferred one million naira. You know why? Half a million that I wanted to give to people, half a million for myself. Can you see that? When you obey God, when you show your present level, you, you multiply. You increase. Isaac sold. He, I want to change. I am more than this. There is a present you. That present you must be sacrificed. You must bury that present you. A new you will emerge. Bow down your head. My time is up. <laughs> In a twasi kame monte peru shaka delemero. Ah, before we pray, please, I, my time is up, but please give me eight minutes, sir. Please, sir. In fact, actually, it's actually ten. I just was said eight. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Close your eyes, everybody. Bow down your head. The major change that takes place in a man's life is to sow yourself as a seed. Sow yourself. That's the first thing to sow yourself. You are here. You have not given your life to Jesus. You have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That is where the new you starts from. So you have to plant the whole you on the altar of God so you can go home a new person. So a new you can imagine. A new you. You want a new you to go home tonight? You want to be born again? You want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? As you all bow our heads and close our eyes wherever you are. Pastor, I want to be born again. Please pray with me. Lift up your right hand. I want to be born again. 
I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I have no reason to be shy or ashamed. I want to be born again. Lift up your right hand. Lift it up above your head. I want to pray with you. If you are raising up your hand in the gallery, in the auditorium, please stand to your feet. I want to be born again. Very quickly, I want to be born again. God bless you. Is there anybody there? Or shall I me look around? Stand to your feet, everybody. Stand to your feet, everybody. If there's anybody there, please walk up to me. Come and join me in front here. I want to pray with you. Come, come. If anybody here, I want to give my life to Jesus from the gallery, wherever you are. Come, come and join me here. Thank you, Jesus. To you behold the glory and the honor and the adoration. In the name, close your eyes. What are you dissatisfied with? What is that status quo? What is it that you don't want again? Just one prayer. And your prayer is, Father, I am more than this. Mention that situation. I am more than this. I refuse to remain like this in the name. Lift your voice and pray that way. I am more than this. I refuse to remain like this. Somebody, are you praying? I am more than this. I refuse to remain like this. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Please close your eyes. Nobody opens his eyes. Who and who must you drop from the list of your friends? Who is that friend? I want you to begin to make a commitment to God tonight. Father, from my list of friends, I delete this name. I delete this name. Go ahead and do that now. Begin to delete names. Those who are not going the same direction with you, they are your friends. They are wheels in the clog of your progress, or clog in the wheel of your progress, rather. Begin to delete their names. Delete their I remove this person. I receive the grace to drop every unprofitable relationship in my life, in my destiny, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Two prayers we need to pray. Number one, you must be better than your father's house. I am more than my father's house. Take me to dimensions beyond the limit or take me beyond the limit of my father's house. I am more. Jabesh was saying, I am more than my father. Are you ready to pray like Jabesh? Lift up your voice and pray. I am more than my father's house. Yeah. I, 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 I can't hear you. I can't. Hey, wait, 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 wait. 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 You did not understand that prayer at all. Because the way you started that prayer, eh? It is the heartfelt prayer, the prayer that your heart feels that we have in. So you need to be desperate. Are you desperate? Desperation. I am more than my father's house. I am more than my father's house. Father! Take me beyond the limits of my father's house. Take me beyond the limits of my mother's house. Lift up your voice and pray. I am more. Yaso kelembi da garosha, yando bere tu galaya gara, esuta katata ta, ika losa, me katwa la be me kete kia la ba, beru tasa ye, ita kalo so so so, shatia kato bra ne susu bra, inam tuasa, vreli bra kete bisoso, o le katwa ya le kato ya lebe. 
Il a dû à ça, ça, ça. I am all that my father's house. Oh Lord, take me beyond the limits of my father's house. Take me beyond the delay of my father's house. Take me beyond the mediocrity of my father's house. I am all. I am all. I am all. Hello, Garosasa. Hello, Banana Yana Baba Baba Baba. Eso so sache. E kata yana Baba Baba. Eso sa sa sa. E kata yana Baba Baba. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we prayed. Isaac told Jacob, or Esau rather, when you can't take it anymore, what is it that you can't take anymore? You want to raise your voice and shout, enough is enough. You will mention that thing. Enough is enough. Ending my life today. Indebtedness. Enough is enough. Ending my life today. Rejection. Enough is enough. Ending my life today. Delay, barrenness. He know. Are you ready to pray? Lift your voice and speak to that thing. Mention the name. Poverty. Enough is all. Oh, lift your voice and pray. Somebody is praying. Somebody is not praying. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Indebtedness. Enough is enough. Come to an end in my life today. Ejo lebere zu ya la baba baba. Ejo ke de lebere zu tala. Ele ke ada ya la baba baba. Ezo ta ya ga ya la. Ezu zaba. Ale bero su sa ya. E ka la ba ya la. Ereke tu la ba ya la. E ka ra to sha de. Enough is enough. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Can I hear a triumphant amen? Amen.